Matthew Lillard. That's our boy. Uh, he needs to turn up the purple a little bit. Like, he's, he's more flesh-toned than purple, uh, than what I was expecting here. What's going on, guys? Oh. <laughs> GT Not Live back again, and Scoot Cawthon <laughs> has finally released the trailer. It has been eight years that we have been waiting for this movie, and now it is finally here, guys. Got Scoot! Scoot Cawthon! You done it! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I can't. I love Taco so much. This is this is my interpretation. This is what I'm imagining is happening. I haven't I haven't watched Daco's reaction yet, but that's my interpretation of probably the opening seconds of what Daco's reaction to the fact that the FNAF teaser has just dropped as of last night. And so, have you watched Daco's reaction? Have I embodied the opening seconds? of his of his reaction you know i haven't watched his yet i wanted to avoid as many reactions as possible okay um just so i could react more purely yeah. in the moment um so but, okay you know from what little sections you did show me i think that was perfect yeah, i thought think? i thought daco was in the room with us yeah, yeah. right I, I summoned him yeah yeah I, I i gave you a peek into that world so maybe maybe I should do a react instead of reacting. So we're gonna react to the trailer that just released last night, or a teaser teaser trailer that just react that just released last night. But maybe what I should really be doing is Matt Pat reacts to Daco's reaction to the FNAF teaser trailer. My reaction to your reaction to my reaction, which <laughs> yeah. might be more revealing. It might be more revealing. It's true. Yeah. Thank you, therapy from Tick Tick Boom. I appreciate it. <laughs> no problem. Uh, that is a musical theater reference for all you cultured <laughs> folk out there. Uh, yeah. So uh, in case you didn't see it, holy jeez, this thing blew up on Twitter last night. Wow. Um, so I, it was one of those things where uh, Jason Blum, uh, you know, the guy over at Blumhouse Productions, he knows what he's playing with here. Uh, and he knows how hungry fans have been for the Five Nights at Freddy's movie for like almost a decade now and uh, how passionate everyone is and how eager they are to see something. I think it was last week, uh, a long extended version of uh, the teaser or the trailer uh, was kind of like bootlegged and dropped out there and kudos to the entire collective community who are like no we're not we're not doing this we're doing this right like get out of here uh, person who's trying to spoil everything we're gonna stay pure to this and I think like it was really impressive to watch everyone kind of collectively you know like support Scott and the production team around this movie and Blumhouse and everything to be like, hey, we're going to respect their wishes, which is like, that's awesome. Like, you guys are eager for it, and yet you're like, we'll, we'll wait. We'll, we'll do it right. Um, I don't know if that sped things along. I don't know if the release of that or the leak of that were like, oh, well, we got to get something out to kind of like cover that up or whatever. Um, but yeah, here it is. So last night, uh, Jason Blum over on Twitter was doing like a big countdown. Like, oh, you guys ready for it? And I was like, oh my gosh, it's gonna be five minutes of Freddy's movie, blah, blah, blah. And, and bit by bit. And then he releases a poster. And everyone's like, oh, that cool poster, woo! But, uh, uh, and then it was another poster, and then another poster, and then another poster. And then it's like, well, I got one more thing for ya. Bada bing, bada boom. And there it was, the teaser. Um, so... Without any further ado, like, let's just, you know what we're here for. We're here to take, what is this, 47 seconds of video? Well, if we look at the time code, which is now on screen. Yeah. It's 47 seconds of video. So, you know, we're here to take 47 seconds of video and, <laughs> and do what we do best, which is expand it into a 50-minute uh, analysis of what secrets are hidden in here. Obviously. <laughs> innovation that excites. In I mean, yeah, it's not, it's not even innovation. This is just what we do here. Yeah. I don't know, actually. We'll, we'll see what we can pick apart. We'll see what predictions we can make about it, how it looks, initial reactions, things like that. So, without any... And this was, Ash, uh, to Ash's credit, too, you called it last night. I did. Because you're like, oh, Jason Blum's warming up for something, and he's going to drop the trailer, 
And then he dropped the poster and I got your email that was like, oh, clown makeup for me tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I told Matt if the trailer didn't drop last night, I was going to wear clown makeup to work. Right. Um, and so I was looking at the posters with absolute fear. <laughs> I just my heart in my God. stomach and I was like, damn it. Like, I need to find like red lipstick and just like all over my cheeks and the nose uh -huh. and i've got some red lipstick over for the for, from style theory we're doing some uh, experiments with lipstick so i've been wearing lipstick all week yeah um so yeah if you, if you need to borrow some of mine you're welcome to thank you it's a uh, passion red Ooh. yeah fiery. oh wow yeah mm -hmm. yeah so love that go. yeah so if you need to but but clearly you don't because a couple hours later it's like by the way yeah and exactly. man, it like got fifty thousand retweets or something within like like it's it's crushing it and Tell you what, man, if there was doubt in the movie industry's mind about the power of online video and gamers and this franchise, I hope, if, unless they are blind or just willfully being ignorant, like, this should, I, I have not seen this level of reaction to a trailer in a long time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Long time. And so, so, hey... Movie industry, Hollywood, <laughs> kind of can't deny it anymore. Especially, and, and here's the thing, right? This is coming out in October, October 27th, I think it is. Yes. It's, before we hop into it, like, I, I gotta just throw it out there, man. Between the Mario movie and this, and, and also Last of Us, like the, the Last of Us uh, HBO Max series. Man, if, they're, if, they're, if this is like a changing of the guard in a lot of ways, or like <laughs> this year, it'll be undeniable. And, and who knows how this is gonna do and what the numbers are gonna look like and whatever. And, and there's one thing to have like internet hype and there's another thing to actually like showing up in theaters and this and that. That's neither here nor there. The social media talk that this thing has generated, the incredible box office that the Mario movies generated, the incredible word of mouth and just like positive reviews and, and reactions to The Last of Us. like has shown you the full gamut and power that video game and online like communities and this like nerddom world that we've existed in and that like Hollywood has been scared to touch or like hesitant to touch. Like this is the, the year. Like the Sonic movie, uh, Detective Pikachu and stuff, we're starting to like show that, hey, there's something here and like showing like cracks in the armor that is like traditional Hollywood or whatever. But now like this is the year that the dam breaks and it's like, Hey, you want a, a, a video game property that's like critically reviewed and, and is like award contending? Boom, Last of Us. Hey, you want something that shows that you could just like make a, a huge like vat of money? Done. Mario movie. Done. It, is, it, is it cinematic greatness? No. But is it a fun movie that everyone went to? Absolutely. It made a billion dollars. Probably be the number one number, I would say probably number one earning movie of this year. I, I, would, I would be shocked if something really beats it, right? And then it's like, hey, and you want to see something that generates a huge amount of social media buzz? Five Nights at Freddy's movie. You know, indie horror game that no one in Hollywood has heard of, but like Blumhouse took a chance on it, and like, there it is. Like, look at this organic hype that it's, it's delivered. So, cross the board, if nothing else, this year is really like those three properties are showing you this just like trifecta of like video gaming is here, it is making moves, and this is a world that can't be ignored anymore. It's awesome. It's it's really, really cool. Um, so without any further ado, let's actually hop into the teaser and uh, talk about that. Yeah, so Five Minutes of Brady's, I will say real quick, <laughs> and I am hopping into it, but the, and this is commentary on it. The poster, when the, when the poster first dropped, Ah. I'm like, oh, it's just the FNAF 2. I, like, I've seen, you know, you see this lineup a lot in the, in the FNAF franchise, but like the low contrast, the red eyes. Uh, red eyes is a weird choice. We'll talk about that because I, I saw that and I'm like, that's weird. Um, it's not my favorite. Bless you. Thank you. Um, you know, and, and I, I get the purple. Ooh, it's purple guy. And like, oh, it's all overlaid in purple and it's, it's spooky. You know, like it's, it's a reference to the games. But from a just pure like thumbnail clickability, it's like, oh, you know. If, if I was a person who did not know Five Nights at Freddy's and wasn't heavily invested in this franchise and all that, I'd be like, ah, like, is this really for me? Is this interesting? Because um, again, you're, there's two audiences here. You're selling it to the, the hardcore fandom. And so, like, you want to get it right for them. But then you're also trying to convince people who've never heard of this franchise or maybe have tangen tangentially heard of it, but just, like, horror, to also sign up for it. Right. And, you know, you're, you're trying to ride that line. But uh, 
from the posters. And we'll dive into the posters. We'll play with sliders and stuff here in a second. But I did want to call that out when I first saw the thumbnail. I'm like, eh. I get the reference, but if I'm just like someone who's like, ah, oh, I like horror and I'm interested in what this movie is, I'm like, yeah. Immediately off the bat, it's not like quite grabbing me. Welcome to Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria, where fantasy and fun. Okay. And, and also I'm supposed to, I know people are going to get mad because I'm stopping up, but you're telling me make sure I stop it so that way. They've been, they've been claiming this, so we're going to be doing frequent pauses in order to thoroughly react to this without getting yoinked. Yeah, we don't want to be yoinked. No, no yoinking is happening here today, friendos. <laughs> Welcome to Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. I wonder if you can tell anything based on her buttons. She's got a lot of, she's got a lot of little pieces of swag right there. I, I love it. Right? She, she is a well-decorated, you know, personality at this place. I also like the details of the outfit, um, as far as this, like, subtle white tie. I, I actually love that design. They should sell that as, as merch, because that's a cool tie with a little, like, funfetti flex on it. Pizzeria, where fantasy and fun. Hold on. You got the foxy plush. <gasps> He's cute. Right, he's a little, little, little baby boy. Got the super excited kid in the back. Yeah! Awesome. Also, uh, I don't know if any of you have ever gone to real life arcades, uh, and especially back in the days when they were coin operated. Um, this, these sorts of games didn't weren't in a lot of them. Um, especially back at, like, when I was growing up in the 80s, right? Uh, like, 80s, because I was born in 86, so I was, like, early 90s. So this is, like, early, early arcade. Um, they didn't show up often, but, man, they were so expensive, and the games were so short. If you were, if you were opting to go for this, you're better off going to, like, the air hockey table. Let's be honest. And fun come to life. Oh, the ball pit! That's, that's what's claiming it. That's a, that, that song. That song. I, I yeah. almost guarantee that's what's claiming it. You're watching this video. This is awesome. It means you've been Looks selected good. as Freddy's newest security guard. All right, here we're gonna rewind, because because we're getting a chunk of video here that I don't want us to get claimed on. But like, let's let's pick it apart. Because all right, aesthetically, this looks great. It looks great, and I and I think looking at this, I'm already impressed with the production value right so there it's you hear this discussion a lot in film review coverage where there is oh this looks cinematic this looks like a movie versus this looks like a, a made for tv streaming or just like a tv show right like there is an imperceptible quality to the cinematography, to the quality of the shots, to the depth of camera work, that is really hard to articulate in a lot of cases, but you know it when you see it. And I think historically, right, like horror movies kind of fall in a, in a weird middle line where sometimes you get stuff that is very like cinematic and beautiful and is well shot and creepy angles and, and rich in color and stuff. And you can tell that it feels like, oh, this is a movie. But then you have kind of like the cheaper side of horror where you fall into that like made for TV angle or stuff that feels, you can tell that it was made on a budget, right? And looking at, you know, this, like, like maybe not this stuff because it's like meant to be like janky, but like this shot right here, that looks great. You know, it looks practically done. You're not seeing, I don't know what, if anything of this is, you know, is CGI'd or kind of like you know, After Effects in or whatever. Um, but it looks really good. The lighting is great. It's really clean. It's really crisp. Same thing with, like, you know, these, these shots feel like this. I mean, you can tell, like, it looks good. There's a perspective here. There, it's not just, like, set up a camera and do, like, basic shots. There are actual angles and thought put into, you know, this one, right? Like, this is emphasizing the size of the pizzeria and how small Mike is in it, you know, because because uh, Josh Hutcherson here is playing Mike, right? Like that's that's public knowledge at this point. So so he's playing Mike, maybe Afton, maybe not. Who knows? Uh, is he Mike Schmidt? Are they one and the same? That's neither here nor there, right? That's presumably what the movie will reveal. But like again, moments like this, it's emphasizing his small size relative to this like gaping cave-like pizzeria, and so you're getting like the, there's thought put into the shots. It's not 
basic stuff. And when you look at Marvel, in a lot of cases, a lot of things that they that people will complain about it, right, is that outside of the big action scenes, you have this kind of just like a lot of basic shot, reverse shot setups when people are talking. And so to see, and I think it's very easy for either inexperienced directors or movies that are done on a budget to do those kind of basic shots. And so already in this trailer, you're seeing perspective, you're seeing cinematography, you're seeing thoughtfulness in the way things are being presented and, and the way things are being framed up, right? I mean, like the framing of this in like the, the middle thirds, right? And he's being framed with the door right behind him. Like, I mean, it's, it's small details like that that add up to, oh, this is a thoughtfully done, well shot production that wasn't just a bunch of like, let's do it on the fly or let's rush through this. But it shows that the team, you know, st storyboarded this out, diagrammed what the shots are going to be, and made sure that they got the shots that they were looking for, rather than kind of like cobbling it together. And, you know, after eight years of, of waiting for this movie, seeing, seeing the level of attention and detail that's being put into it, like, I didn't know what to expect out of it, right? I, I hoped for the best, but, you know, video game movies still have a, a varying degree of quality, right? And, and a lot of it depends on the production team and how excited they are and how much they've invested in the property. And, you know, within the first 15 seconds here, 14 seconds, you can tell they're, they've really dug in and they're really respecting the, the story, the characters, things like that. So it's, it's, I think it's a, a, off the bat, it's a very good sign. Um, I love that there's just a random Showtime button <laughs> that anyone can tap to activate the animatronics. Like, yeah, just smack a button on the wall. That's fine. Um, we the, should oh, have that. What's that? We should have a Showtime button. We should, in the back? Yeah. And we just smack it and then like... Yeah, and at the beginning of like every GT Live, we hit the Showtime button and then... We do little robot like, things. Yeah, and yeah like I start, I, I start like deactivate it and then you hit the search one. What's going on, guys? Oh. <laughs> I go, oof, I'll go back again. Uh, <laughs> so we can do that. Yeah, we'll do the Showtime <laughs> button. Um, here, other things. Again, I, I would rewatch it a bunch of times, but I want to make sure that we're, <laughs> we're not getting claimed. Um, so we got the arcade games. I wonder when Light Gun games when did light gun games appear? Like, I feel like the light gun was in the NES era because you had the NES zapper where you could play, like, Duck Hunt and things like that at home. I'm not calling out an ana anachronism. Anachronism? That's it. I always have to remind myself how to pronounce it. I'm not calling out an anachronism here, but I would... I see this, and I'm like, what game is this, and is it in this era? Because <laughs> me being me. Uh, this looks, it looks a lot like Area 51, which was, uh, an old arcade game where you had to shoot aliens. It, it terrified me as a kid. There was a restaurant in my hometown that had it in the corner, and, like, I was always scared of it because it made all these spooky noises, and the alien designs really freaked me out in it. And so I was always nervous about it, uh, and I would, like, always be, like, over, watching it over my shoulder. And so I feel like that was a more modern thing than this, uh, because you're showing, like, Galaga and stuff like that, and, uh, this is Centipede. Right, so that sets it in a very clear time period of when this pizzeria is, and so I'm wondering, is this is this correct to call it? Were you looking up like yeah. games? Yeah. So it seems like um, games like video games in arcades that had the gun hit peak popularity in the '90s. Right. Um, but I learned light gun games mm -hmm. preceded um electronic like video games in arcades and came out in like the 1930s. No way, really? Right? Wait, light gun games came out in the 1930s? Yeah, I like literally just, hold up. No way. The first light guns were produced in the 1930s, following the development of light sensing vacuum tubes. In 1936, the technology was introduced in arcade shooting games, beginning with Seaberg Ray O. Light. Wow. That's right. I mean, I mean here's the thing, right? The, the technology behind light gun games is fairly simple, especially in the Zapper era, right? Where, where the target. I, I forget the specifics, so, so forgive me if this isn't entirely correct, but the rough idea, right, was the zapper sends out a beam and it basically transforms the screen into a white box and there are black marks over it, so the targets are black, right? And so the light gun sends out the beam to basically sense whether it's, it's hitting black or white, and that's it. And then it's, and it, 
And if it bounces back, then because it's because it's white, then it's reflecting it back, right? So if it bounces back, boom, you missed. Or if it's if it don't if it doesn't receive the sensor back, then you hit, right? And it's a very like black and white. Did it hit or did it not hit? That's why light guns were actually able to be executed very early on in the history of video games. I didn't realize it was that. Or that's I know crazy. I learned something really wild today. That's maybe so we can make a YouTube short. Oh man, we could do a short. We could do a short about oh, it. We could do shorts. Yes. I'll, ask, I'll tell Tom. Content. Woo. Um, but yeah, so not calling you out, movie. Uh, I, I I'm challenging this scene right here. I'm curious what game this is because it looks more modern than uh, Centipede. Not being the nitpicky guy, but definitely being the nitpicky guy. I come to life. Ball pit. Are those kids gonna time travel though? Time travel ball pit. Anyone? This, is this is this is this the right canon here? Are they going to be teleported through time? Respect the lore, movie. No. <laughs> the loss of ball pits in your day-to-day -day amusement uh, amusement restaurants. It's a shame. It's a shame, but it's also probably for the better. Oh, humanity is definitely better off as a result. <laughs> certainly, like at healthier as a species. Yeah. Without question, we are healthier as a species. But you know, this was a simpler time where. <laughs> No one realized how how many germs they were subjecting themselves immune to. Immune systems were built here. We, this, yeah, right? This is the foundation <laughs> of the immune system. Humanity is like, we're just going to immerse ourselves in a tub of germs and detritus. And we will, you know, only... Survival of the fittest, thy name is Ball Pit. So true. That's it. So <laughs> the, true. The human species has weakened since we discovered just how horrific Ball Pits are for our health. Hit it, guys. Hit it, guys. I like that they're singing, like, classic 80s pop. The secrets that you keep. You know, song choice, also solid. Um, I hear the secrets that you keep, see? It's a reference to the lore. Also a popular song at the time, but it's a reference to the lore. They're keeping secrets. Oh my gosh. Mm. It's a reference to the franchise. Because right? Because it has so many secrets that right? no one can figure out. There it it's is. It's actually the secrets that Scott is keeping. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. He has all the secrets. He does. He does. Scoot! Scoot's got the secrets! <laughs> um, okay, so this is, this is uh, these are the actual animatronics. Yeah, they look great. I, I, I will say, like, I'm assuming that these are the, the actual physical puppets, right, that they built. So Jim Henson, I don't know if you guys have been following the details or not. I don't know how much you know. But um, the, the Jim Henson company, right? The guys who did the Muppets and like basically like the go-to guys for all things like puppeteering and, and, and stuff like that, like built these animatronics. And I gotta say like from the same, I'm sure we'll get more shots of them later, but the angles here look really good. Um, I mean, it, it, it looks so, on one hand I'm like, it looks so accurate to the games. And, and you want to kind of celebrate that, absolutely. But on the other hand, it's like, yeah, they should look accurate to the games, but, and Scott Cawthon being involved in the movie, right, would be very particular about that. Looks really good. Um, the models look really good here. I'm excited to see more from them. And I love the fact that they were done using actual animatronics. If you are watching this- The O is red. Is this symbolic? Is it symbolic? Oh. I don't know. There's a lot of secret red O's in my life at this point. What? There are. It's random. Where? How? Why? The the secret project that people will find out about <clears throat> on Saturday. Game theory upload. Is that the end oh, of that episode? Oh yeah. Also has a secret red O. I don't know why. It just does. I've, I've been encouraging them. By the way, this you will find out more about the secret project in Saturday or Sunday's upload of, of Game Theory. It's a different episode. It's a Couch Time episode. Uh, but I start talking about some of these secret projects that have been lingering in the background for me, um, and and they're hype. Uh, one of them involves you guys. If you want to show up, if you're around New York, uh, May 30th or May 31st, or or in general, but like specifically May 30th, 31st, I'm doing something in New York, and I hope you can show up. Um, it'd be awesome to, to meet you guys, hang out with you guys. I'm doing a talk back. There's all sorts of good stuff happening. Um, but as part of this project, there's a, the, the logo that was designed has a red O in it. And I'm like, why? And so I've, I've been talking does. to them about that. It does. It has she a red O does. in it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I've been like, hey, have you thought about making an ARG 
with red letters all over the place. And so I don't know what it is about the letter O in, prop in media properties that I am involved with or tangentially interested in right now, but like, <laughs> it's just the red O's are speaking to me at this well, point. Well, it actually might be Scarlet. Scarlet? Yeah. Like the O? Yeah. It might be Scarlet uh -huh. instead of red? Yep. Okay, yes, it might be. Yeah, You're right. because you know what O is? Mm -hmm. what, what is O? Tell me what O is. I'm so confused where you're going with this. I want what a yes and o? you. What is O? Yes. An, a vowel. A Broader. letter. Yes. A letter. A letter. That might be. The scarlet letter? Yeah. Are you saying like I'm, I'm a prostitute now? <laughs> no. Are you saying that I'm a woman of the night? No, I just that I'm being persecuted to... <laughs> by society? Telling me to wear a red O on my chest? As though I am, <laughs> I am being judged by society for my life choices? I just wanted to make a little literature reference. <laughs> Thank you, Nathaniel Hawthorne, with your scarlet le No wonder I didn't know where you were going with that. <laughs> like, oh, she's pulling out the deep cuts of Nathaniel Hawthorne's classic, The Scarlet Letter. Yeah, so maybe this movie might have some inner textuality with the Scarlet, <laughs> the scarlet letter. letter. Yes, we will. You know what? I'm going to hop on that right now. I'm going to go read this, reread the Scarlet Letter so that way I can see the hidden lore and how the Scarlet Letter and the Five Nights at Freddy's Blumhouse production unite together. I'll get right on that. Thank you. The, the day that Game Theory jumped the shark. Isn't it a violet? Isn't it a Scarlet A? The yes, Scarlet Letter is technically is. an A, correct? I believe it is. Okay, so they missed the memo. Well, they, they read the Cliff's Notes version of it. <laughs> I'm right, right? That's Nathaniel Hawthorne? Was yeah, I right? No, that is. That's, yes. that's who it is, yeah. Nailed it. Good one. I'm proud of myself. I haven't thought about Scarlet Letter in a long time. You see, it's not like a direct reference. It's like a nod. Yeah. To so, the Scarlet Letter. So tip of the hat. Yeah. In the direction of. Right. Because okay. I don't want to give it away. Sure. Absolutely. That'd be too obvious. Um, okay, so... This, yes. So, man, the sign is really beat up. This is the one that uh, you saw circulating a lot online where they were like, oh, set leak or whatever. Here's the Five Nights at Freddy's like sign um, where he wears gloves, which is an interesting choice. In this video, it means you've been... Wait, so, okay, so here's, here's a wide shot where you get to see some stuff. So let's check it out what we see. Um, okay, hold up. Point this out of there. Right, it's Block and Chica. This is a cool detail. Um, I like this, where you have the like stained. Gl this feels old school Pizza Hut. In case you guys again like weren't born in the era that I was born in, like old school pizzeria restaurants, and especially like uh, I believe Pizza Hut back in the day. Right, it was very popular for um, restaurants with booths to separate the booths out with these kind of like stained glass little designs, and it's it's cool here that they've translated that into. Uh, the characters for both, like, Chica, and you can see it there. Um, but you also see Bonnie back here. That's awesome. Um, I don't know if this was the original pizzeria design layout, but this is a terrible efficiency when it comes to, like, the booth layout. This is stressing me out a little bit. Yeah. Like, you're not maximizing capacity there. You're leaving a lot on the table, and the, the traffic patterns are going to be a hot mess. Yeah, the, the thought of being a server here stresses me out. Right? You're, like, bumping into each other. The customers don't know where to go. It's, like, out in the middle of everything. Like, from a design standpoint... This is, this is the hottest of messes. Yeah. Um, especially because it's, like, if they were tables, like, like similar to uh, the um, the main, like, party room in the original FNAF game. Like, if, if they're tables, it's like, okay, that's one thing. But here you got, like, booths set up. It's tough. Uh, you got a prize corner back there, so that's good to know. You got what looks to be, is that the kitchen area? Like, the kitchen window? Something like that. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, got your classic drawings on the wall. It's cool. It's big. It's big. And again, like, I, I talked a little bit about the, the cinematography or, like, the, the camera shots and the setups here. The, the fact that um, it's all done practically, I think, helps a lot, too, right? So if you watch Daco's coverage uh, or 8-Bit Ryan, um, they brought out a couple people to the movie set, right? And they showed, like, oh, they have rebuilt the entire pizzeria, which allows you to get shots right like this, right? I think nowadays we're so used to, to movies where there's such a heavy use of green screen that you lose a lot of the like richness of the set and the and the, the natural shadows and the depth and things like that because it's all composited together. And you can replicate it, but you lose a little bit of like the the actual like physicality of it. And so it's cool to actually see this done practically 
and I'm assuming most, most if not everything in the shot is practical. Uh, in which case, then it's like, wow, you know, that's that's a physical set. They built that. So that's why it looks so good. Been selected as Freddy's. Okay, here we go. We got, we got, we got Bonnie. It's interesting because I know the puppets, the puppets are real, right? The, the animatronics are real. I can't tell if he kind of looks CGI. Like he looks so smooth. Whereas I imagine them all like fuzzy and furry. I don't know. Looks good though. You've been selected as Freddy's newest security guard. There it is. There's that sign with the gloves. It's like, it's, it's an interesting choice. I think it's to differentiate from other canons or to show that this is its own universe, I guess. Um, the choice of white gloves. I've seen this circulating online. I don't know why. Exactly, exactly. I, I've been trying to come up with like a justification for it. And maybe it's just like to show that this is a different pizzeria from anything that we've been seeing in the games or this is an alternate universe version. So that way we're taking the, the lessons of this world and applying them by squinting at it or like with a slant as opposed to like, oh, it's one for one with the with the games, you know? As Freddy's newest security guard. That's a good look at Freddy. You get to see a little bit of the endoskeleton there, which I like, which again looks true to form for FNAF 1 with kind of the basic teeth, kind of like the flat face. So, you know, leaning into some of those rudimentary designs, which is great. There's Cupcake. Cupcake is actually pretty creepy here. You kind of like see through. That's cool. I like the close up of the cupcake. You don't, you know, uh, cupcake is so forgotten. And yet, like, that's cool. I like that little feature. Okay, we got, got your breaker box. Celebrate poster in the back. That's from the first game. Like, that is, like, a direct rip of the first games. So you're seeing references back pretty clearly. Oh, man, there's the security office. There's Celebrate again. Up here, what is that? We'll get to the security cameras, obviously. Uh, can I zoom in? I cannot. Ugh. And I do, let me just print screen. I pulled this up in, where is it? Here we go. Nope, where did I pull it up? There it is. Uh, can I do a new, boop, boop, new. I don't know what the size is, of this thing is. Is this a real life? Is this a fantasy? Is this real life? Is this a fantasy? Okay, let's see. What is that? It looks like of the characters. Because you see Bonnie with a guitar, presumably Freddie with the microphone. Yeah, you can't really tell, but I wasn't sure if that was like going to be a newspaper clipping about like missing kids or, you know, death at local pizzeria or something like that. Right? You know, and this also goes back to one of the, epi this actually goes back to one of the things that we had talked about, right? Which is, he is a security, so Mike here is a security guard at the pizzeria after it's closed. Right, this is after it is, it is shut down, right? He is going back and protecting a restaurant after its heyday, which is something that, again, like I talked about in the, in the timeline and is one of those things that I think has been difficult to kind of wrap your head around. And it's exciting to see the movie talking about this, right? Is I've suspected that, hey, there is this world where the security guards coming in are going to close down pizzerias, not currently active, open pizzerias and you're seeing that here where where mike is just being a security guard for an old building that you know might be getting ransacked or might be you know falling to disrepair or you know you just got to kind of like do building maintenance every once in a while so that's what you're seeing here which is which is cool uh we get a sense of some of the different locations so some of the alleys obviously we're going to be riffing on like oh spooky things happening in hallways and outside and stuff like that there's the uh the cleaning closet from the first game so that's a good reference some more hallways where spooky stuff can happen i believe that's the show stage looks like i i don't think it's rounded enough to be pirate's cove um looks to be the show stage can't really make out what that is and then there's your kind of like dining room party room area stuff uh, also interesting seeing how they're visualizing the security device, right? So how you're manipulating the cameras and stuff. Because, uh, again, the idea of how do you control security cameras 
it's been a vague concept. You know, the games have kind of lightly alluded to it, but for the most part, it's been it's been gameplay. It's been mouse flicks, right? So now you're seeing, oh, there's a joystick, and there are you know switcher buttons that you can you can use to move them, and I believe that actually goes to what is it? Uh, maybe nope. Oh, it's uh, Security Breach TV now, right? Yes. So, I don't know if it's one for one. I'm not 100% convinced it is. But you look at this. So this is one that we were we were gonna actually initially film us talking about this today, right? Yeah. But then the, but then the trailer dropped, and it's like, oh well, we gotta talk about that. Um, we'll get to this. Um, I think they've been updating it, but it's one of those things where you see this, right? And you have the joystick, and you have switcher buttons, and so in a lot of ways, we're seeing what these worlds. Kind of like, oh, this is how we envision security cameras operate, and this is this is how they work. And so, I, there was some talk about this being a, a computer module. Like, what is this? It looks to me very clearly like it's meant to be, you know, another security device. You know, a, a security camera device operating it. Uh, let's see. Anything in the closet over here? Not so much, but again, a closer look of of the cleaning closet, which is awesome. Here, obvious uh, and very good recreation of the FNAF one. Shot, which is cool. I like that. Looks Hello? great. I mean, and again, it's being done with the actual animatronics. So it, it looks like so precise. And they've done a, just an amazing job of recreating that scene from the game with the real life props, which is awesome. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so much. Freddy in the corner. That's actually a good reveal. Hello? It's awesome. Right there. Do you see him? Great. It's <laughs> <laughs> just, just like hanging out. Hey, bud. <laughs> Yo, welcome, welcome to the crew. We're going to have so much fun together. Awesome. What's her name? Julia? What do you think? It's an IA. Hila? Hila? I don't know. Probably doesn't matter. Let's eat. Good reference. Cupcake. Oh, now you can actually make out more of her buttons. So you got the checkered pattern. You got this, looks like maybe a reference to the tie. Let's eat, which is Chica's thing. You got cupcake. You got like chubby Bonnie. <laughs> kind of like, uh, chubby bunny, chubby right? Chubby bunny. Chubby bunny. <laughs> uh, looks like maybe a real life bear there in reference to Freddy. Looks like you have a Freddy there too. I can't make out these two. That one looks like a Freddy because it's got a hat. Anything in the background? Nothing. Okay. Hello? We're going to have so much fun together. Nuts. This is nuts. I, so, this Fun is nuts. together. What? <laughs> what? Lol, what? This is crazy. So, okay, you're getting the security guard outfit. This is nuts. What? What is this? Is this a... Sp this is not a spring trap. <laughs> if you ever wondered what a spring trap suit looks like, uh, I don't think this is it. Um, I, I mean, I don't even know, man. Uh, this, <laughs> it's like a blender for your face. It, it, this seems to me like, like just a, a weird murder. Like, is, is this, is this like a remnant ex extractor? Say it. Really? You can, can I? You can. Remnant? Yeah, <laughs> there it is! Right? Like, is this... Like, this is like one of the strangest ways to mur... I, I'm assuming that, right, this is a William Afton creation, right? That is to kill people? Kids? Like, like why? I don't know what the heck this is supposed to be! Like, what a weird way to kill something, which makes me think that it has to be tied to experimentation in some way, right? Like, if the idea of, of Remnant is, you know getting people to have like this very traumatic scary experience and and it's this agony infused soul metal juice like maybe this is it right it's like oh this is the worst way to die and so you're like oh my gosh and so it's it th this feels very much of the movies for the movies right this is this is one of those where it's like it's a scary movie we need a scary thing to add to it this is not attached to the lore at all you can see some of the teeth down here as well as the general shape which makes me think that this is it's not a chica, 
not Bonnie. It, it, I, I feel like by process of elimination, it has to be like a, a repurposed Freddy head, maybe? Uh, or something. But it, it looks like it's a Freddy head of some form. Um, that is... Yeah, like remnant extractor or like gets people to have this traumatic experience before they die, in which case it's like, oh no, and then the soul metal juice <laughs> leaks out. <laughs> right? It's gross. This is weird. This is a weird thing. But I'm 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 I kinda love it. It looks incredibly intimidating. It's a bl it's a face blender. Like that's that's pretty horrific. And the fact that it's got like a torture setup too, like it feels saw in a lot of ways. Which is not what I was expecting out of my Five Nights at Freddy's. I was expecting, like, oh, spooky, you know, spooky whatever. Or, like, oh, you know, Freddy, like the last shot where, like, Freddy's peeking in in a corner. Or you got, like, Chica, like, I'm watching. Or maybe you got William Afton, like, you know, chasing you with a knife and, and shoving you in an animatronic suit or whatever. But, like, murder, murder face blender? Animatronic face blender? D did not have that one on my bingo card for 2023, tell you what. So, I'm very curious. <laughs> oh, man, there's so much to... I'm so sorry that we have to pause all this. So, you got Foxy on the loose. Looks good. This is, um... Abby. Abby, right? Yeah, because it's, it's a... It's a anagram of baby. So, there's been some speculation or there's been some thoughts about, like, is this, you know, the, the movie stand-in of Elizabeth Afton? Does she eventually become baby? Is she going to get trapped in one of these things? Ah, she. I mean, very clearly, it's a different take. Like if if this was meant to be like a parallel for Elizabeth Afton, at least from a visual standpoint, she looks very different, right? With with darker hair, um, you know, she looks more like the type of kid that like would be Cassidy, um, you know, with with. I, I, I say that, but also, like, Cassidy is kind of in this vague territory, too. Charlie is probably the closest parallel from a visual standpoint with, a, you know, black hair, things like that. So, I don't know. Uh, it could be just, you know, standalone character and that the whole, like, Abby baby reference is just kind of a misdirect, like this franchise does a lot. Um, you know, I'm trying to think of anything with the clouds. Nothing, like, really symbolic there, I don't think. Unless she's going to heaven! <gasps> We're going to have so much fun together. Cool. That's legitimately scary. And that's, again, like a good callback to the to the games where you have, like, just Freddy's eyes peeking out. Awesome. So good. That's legitimately awesome. Legitimately awesome. Okay, here we go. So there's Murder Mask, Foxy. Nothing in the background here. Do we know who this is? Um, folks are speculating it's Vanessa. Right? Because there's a casting for Vanessa? Yeah. Is there? Yes. Also, this actress was in season one of You, and she's really good. So it makes me happy to see her here. Oh, man, look at the trailer. Yeah, Vanessa. Female villain. Hmm. Right? I mean, she does look like Vanessa. Yeah. Like, like uh, from the games, you know? So... I don't, I don't know, man. <laughs> this, this one's messing with the lore. That's, that's all I'm saying. The fact that you have Mike and also a... Uh, clearly, this is a... We're giving you a lot of misdirects. There's a lot of references and Easter eggs and things that you can take in a lot of different directions. But, you know, to have Mike, a girl potentially named Abby Baby, and also Vanessa all mixed in together. And Vanessa's coming from a very different part of the timeline. I don't know. And, and obviously her outfit is not telling you anything about this character yet. So, good to know that. Five, five spooky kids. Five spooky kids outside. Well, one of them is dressed in yellow, kind of like a chicken. There's bunny ears. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. So you got Bonnie. You got Chica, Chica. right? Yeah. Uh, Susie. I bet her name's Susie. She was the first. She's seen everything. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing that we hear. Uh, you got a kid in a top hat, which is presumably... 
What would that be? Like, Freddy, I guess? I guess so. So, so okay, so, so this is like Missing Children incident, right? Like, very clearly, this seems to be a reference to, like, the five kids that ultimately possess the five animatronics. You're Freddy, Foxy, Bonnie, Chica, and Golden Freddy. Um, so, uh, Josh here is, uh, Mike here, is being visited by them? Uh, having a hallucination? I, like, it, it's, it's hard to tell, because on one hand, it's like, you know... It's one of those things where I, I can't imagine a scenario in which he would be seeing them outside the pizzeria if he's now a new security guard. So this has to be some sort of like hallucination or maybe like when he's there, he's being like visited by visions maybe. Um, but yeah, you got Bonnie. I'm assuming that this then is Cassidy, Golden Freddy, because she's, she's a redhead. Which I would assume is like, oh, redhead, foxy, ba ba ba. You know, like one for one parallels. It's not subtle, symbolic storytelling here, right? You got, you got Freddy then, and and so these two seem to be Freddy and Golden Freddy, maybe. But because he's not directly wearing a prop or is like one for one with a character, I'm assuming that this was, and he's in front. I'm assuming this is the leader of them, and then Chica. <laughs> then they play hide and seek, <laughs> and they're off. You get a better shot of him. Oh, this is a, is that a boy? Can't tell. But yeah, Foxy, Freddy, Chica. Huh. <laughs> Matthew Lillard. That's our boy. Uh, he needs to turn up the purple a little bit. Like he's, he's more flesh toned than purple uh, yeah. than what I was expecting here. Well, maybe he has cool undertones. Cool undertones, that's what it is. Yeah. That's what it is. Did he do the vein test? Oh! We got to test him on the golden jewelry. Yeah. That's a, is he a gold or a silver jewelry guy? It's so that's true. A, that's a style theory reference. In case you're not watching style theory, go check it out. You'll, you'll understand what we're talking about. And we'll be able to figure out the color tones of Matthew Lillard as a result. <laughs> I, love, I, love, I love creepy, robotic, like, maniacal laughter. I feel, that always gets to me. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think that is? Is that the kids? Like the kids in their suits? Maybe. Yeah. Where? It sounds like a deranged chica. Yeah, like a deranged, I, I could see that. Deranged right? chica. Yeah. What also, that laughter, where else am I associating it with? I'm, I'm having a hard time pulling out, like where have I heard that right? style of laughter before? It sounds before? so familiar. Right? It sounds really familiar to me and I can't place my finger on what that sound effect or what that like, that sound is from. Right? Because it's very, it's a very specific horror reference to something and I can't, I'm, I'm digging deep into the archive and I'm trying to, what, what is that? I mean, the original FNAF scream. It's not it. What, what's that from? Is that from Alien? No. Um, like, it's, like, is it pulled from something similar? It, it, no, it, I don't think so. That one was pulled from... Shoot, I forget. Now, now I, I completely forget all this stuff. I, I'm, I'm off on the wrong tangent here. <laughs> is it like it? No, it's not it. God, I can't. If you guys know what that sound clip is for, and obviously I'm sure that this is an original sound clip that they're using for this, but like it sounds so similar to a very specific other horror franchise of like weird, maniacal, kind of like almost mechanical laughter. I can't, I can't pinpoint it. I'm not sure what, what I'm trying to reference here. <laughs> Okay, okay, so now we got the big clips. Okay, so before we get to the balls. Why does it look like Saul Goodman was screaming in a pizzeria? <laughs> <laughs> Saul Goodman? <laughs> it's, this is, uh, you know, part of the Breaking Bad uh, series. Oh, Obviously. right, right. It does look like Saul Goodman, doesn't it? <laughs> That's... A lot of crossovers happening here. Oh, that is so funny. Okay, so let's see. So what, what okay, what's happening here? We're, we're just getting, like, what is flying away? We have a camera flying away. What What is good old Mike maybe Afton looking at here? Or, you know, what's, what is this? What is flying up? Is it, and, it, and it's flying up. They could have reversed it, but it doesn't look like it's reversed. What would be flying up in a FNAF movie? Ah, curse you, demon child flying around. This sort of shot you see a lot when there's like like aliens or like some supernatural entity that's like coming in or coming in to crush you or whatever. But the FNAF franchise is not that. The FNAF franchise does not have threats, airborne strikes. 
Spoiler alert, there's been a lot of weird stuff in the lore of this franchise. Airborne Strikes, not one of them. And so the idea of what, what is flying away here, I don't know. I'm intrigued though, because he's clearly looking angrily or attacking something that's, that's flying away or is above him in some way. And I don't know what that would be. Not clear. <laughs> this guy, Saul Goodman. Saul good, man. So this is interesting, right? So this is the security uniform, but it's also the same uniform that we see here. Here. Oh, so is that like the predecessor to Mike Schmidt? It might be the, the guy before him, right? Because look here, he's, so he's wearing, a secu I, I, he's wearing a security outfit, right? Or like a security kind of like hoodie. Yeah, so, so this is the most casual security uniform of all time, right? But he's wearing this like security look here without a tie and without a button down. This guy though has a button down and tie. So it feels like this might be a misdirect. Although no, but they're showing it. I mean, they're showing his face through this. So it's, uh, he must, uh, uh, he must wind up in this device at some point, but I'm not sure these shots are him. You know, I don't think this shot is also him, but he also appears in the mask. So it seems like two people are probably going to be victims of this thing, if not more. But yeah, I would say that that guy is security guard prior. You know, and he's being attacked by, by an animatronic that's larger than him, right? I, I mean, I don't think that's saying much because the animatronics seem to be so much bigger in general, but you notice the eye line is looking up, so he's looking at something that's coming down at him, so it's a bigger thing. So he's getting captured. This is the smush. Smush! Smush! <laughs> that, 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 one, that one doesn't quite resonate. <laughs> yeah, that one, that's, a, that's a, a pretty light foot. Awesome, this is a great shot. And now she travels through time. This is the point where she travels through time. Oh, great. Back to 1986, 87, 83. She's what? gonna see the bite. She's gonna, she gonna see that bite. She's gonna see the bite. Man, wouldn't that be, <laughs> wouldn't that be a trip? If all of a sudden everyone's like, oh, FNAF horror movie, spooky kids in an animatronic restaurant. And then all of a sudden time travel, they, they're just like, and also the ball pit time travel. <laughs> just what? Just how to lose an audience in T minus three seconds. How to lose an audience, but how to get me. Yeah, I don't know if you'd even get me. Like, <laughs> I'm in. Are you in at that I'm point, Ash? In. Are you like, you know what? Basic horror tropes, nah, nah. Time travel ball pit, yes. They're subverting expectations, <laughs> and those are the risks I want to see in my cinema. How angry would people be if Abby sunk down into a ball pit and popped up <laughs> and suddenly saw the bite of 87 or something? <laughs> And everyone's like, what is going on? And everyone's like, oh, they're all they're pulling from the books. It's just references that no one will understand. <laughs> Crush that ball, man. That's uncalled for. Cool. Oh, here's the red eyes. I love a, a Toriador march. Well done. Well done. Well done. You also notice, okay, so here we go. So notice. I think this is intentional. It could be me misreading it or reading too much into it, but how the color changes here from yellow to purple. So yeah, he, it seems like at a certain point, right? There is a transformation here of yellow to purple. So like from, from good to evil, from uh, you know, Golden Freddy to Purple Guy to like, cause you'll notice here too, right? There's, there's a color tone shift. And again, cinematic language, right? This is the stuff that we're, now we're in the realm of like directors who tell visual stories and coloring makes a big difference. We saw it in the, I, I gave the thumbnail slash the poster a little bit of a hard time with this where it's like, oh, it's purple. Like I get it. But here you see, and I, as I was watching this, I noticed purple is suddenly the predominant color in these scenes which in this franchise that matters. And so to me, this is per like, That's such a great shot. It, this is a great shot. I, th this, this ending sequence is really well put together and, and Blumhouse is really good at putting together like really solid trailers.
But again, you're seeing all these undertones of purple all through these final shots here, which tells me that, and then there's red. So there's red, there's purple, and there's yellow as kind of like some of the predominant color tones here. And so I'm wondering if the eyes being red, because here, Freddy's eyes aren't red. Here, they're, here, whatever this thing is, is red. But here, his eyes aren't red. So it feels like there might be stages, and also when he pulls back Bonnie too, she's not red, but that's also, or he's not red, but that's also when um, it's not activated yet. So it seems like there might be stages of the animatronics, like coming to life or or activating. Like maybe there's a neutral mode, maybe there's like an angry mode, uh, you know, and... Or, again, if you're pulling from the books, right, and not, not Fazbear Frights uh, and me joking about time travel ball pits, but rather Silver Eyes. In Silver Eyes, there are moments where Afton and the, uh, is able to, like, manipulate or, or affect the actions of, of the animatronics. Because, again, remember, in the lore of the books... Afton, or sorry, in the lore of the books, uh, the animatronics are, are mindless, angry beings, right? It's even in Ultimate Custom Night where, where Charlie, the puppet, says, the others are, are like animals, but I, I am more aware, or whatever the quote is. And so I'm wondering if in this movie, these, you know, with these different modes, are there modes where they're like just kind of like rampant and on the loose and attacking anything? Are there moments where they're able to be put under the control of someone else? Is there moments where, like, like again, that color shift tells me something, right? Like, it seems like, you know, we went from being just generally angry or something to now they're like, now we're in, like, Afton zone. Like, this shift. And again, it, it could just be a flash moment, right? That could just be a moment where the color in the background changed because it's, you know, rotating light or whatever. So I could be completely reading into that. But you don't use purple in this franchise without it being intentional. Purple here, purple here, in like these moments where the kids are in threat all of a sudden. Or like, not the kids, like Abby, and then like presumably Mike as well, like are in threat. You see this and it's like, I don't know. Like, is this Afton on the attack then? Is this like he's roaming through the pizzeria? And yes, we're seeing the threat coming from the robots. But where's Afton in all this? Is, is this like him on the serial killer hunt? I don't know. It's interesting. Hmm. Also interesting that they only show Freddy and Bonnie in this sequence, right? Like, why only these two? Like, we're not seeing... A, like, we see a silhouette of Foxy but we don't actually see Foxy activated. And here, we saw a silhouette of Chica earlier with the cupcake, but also, it's just weird that it's like, here's the two! So it's a, it's a weird note to end on, especially because it's not you're not ending on Freddy either. And if you're cutting to Five Nights at Freddy's, you would presumably end with Freddy's. Like, by the nature of us storytelling the editing of this, you would think that this guy right here is Freddy. Obviously he's not, but it's one of those things, like, from the medium of storytelling through edits, I would think like, oh, you're ending on the character that is now the name of the franchise. Right? Like, why are we ending on Bonnie? This is good! This is... Here's what I'll say. This is so much better than I expected it to be. Like, I, you know, I, I've set my expectations for this uh, pretty low. Like, I, when, it, when it handed, when Warner Brothers originally had this, I'm like, ugh, I don't know, I don't think this is going to be great. And you're going to have a bunch of, like, people walking around in their, like, mascot outfits pretend to be like, I'm a robot now, wah. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons why it ended up moving, right? I think, you know, they didn't know what to do with it. I'm assuming Scott was, like, very protective over, like, no, it's got to be robots. And I'm sure WB's like, we ain't paying for that, get out of here. Uh, <laughs> like, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, and so then it moves over to here. And, and Blumhouse, I mean, they, they do really good work. I think Blumhouse is one of the smartest filmmakers out there in the industry right now where they're like, hey, you don't need to spend an egregious amount of money to make a movie. You can do a lot with a little as long as you have people who care about the franchise and understand, like, the essence of horror and scares and, you know, understand aesthetics, right? And I think that they have shown that, like, the, stylistically, this looks really good, you know? And, and granted, you're picking the best things for a teaser, 
uh, you know, you want to put your best foot forward, unless you're, you know, the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, in which case you give everyone Sonic teeth, and, and the world is like, <laughs> WTF are you guys doing, guys? Um, you know, but this feels really good. It looks good. It feels good. Aesthetically, it's right. Um, yeah, like, solid. Uh, you know, I was, again, I was worried that this would wind up as a... Wally's Wonderworld, Wally's Wonderland, like whatever the the one that WB did eventually come out with, which I feel like must have been a scrapped script or something that they had in development. And then they're like, well, Five Nights at Freddy's didn't want this, so might as well slap something else on it. Um, and it became a completely different movie. That's a the I, I've had that theory for a long time. Um, maybe I should do it now that this is getting close to coming out. Ooh. Yeah, maybe we'll do the Wally's Wonderland theory. Um, <laughs> I think I forget. Whatever. It, it's not. It's not great. It's got Nick Cage in it. Uh, and it's a weird movie. It's Nicholas a wild Cage is in this movie? Mr. Cage himself, yeah. He doesn't even speak. Because, again, the reason he doesn't speak is because they'd have to pay him extra based on uh, SAG contracts if he had a certain number of lines. So he doesn't speak. He's a silent protagonist the entire oh, time. Oh, you are I, joking. No, it is. It is a, there's a joking. lot of... Yeah, okay, we're going to do a Wally's Wonderland theory now to talk about all this stuff. Because <sighs> there's a lot of weird stuff in that movie that I'm like, I think I, I think I see that this was a FNAF script that ended up not getting made. I think this is, was, the reason he doesn't speak is one, because the games have a silent protagonist, but also SAG rules for, if you're paying Nicolas Cage, you get to pay him a lot less for that, if he's not talking. He just like, wanders and ponders? It, yeah, yeah, and drinks soda. Oh, wow. At the end of every night. It's like his reach, it's, it is a weird, weird ride, if you want to see a weird animatronic move. But anyway, that's, that's what I was worried about Five Nights at Freddy's becoming, and, and, you know, kudos to... To Scott and the team over there who, uh, Scott, uh, and the team over there who, I mean, have been really, it seems like they're really being protective over the franchise and they recognize like, hey, if you do this right, this can do really well, you know, but you're also dealing with probably some of the pickiest, you know, most in the weeds fan base out there. So you got to do it right. 2023, the year that changed the movie industry into the video game industry. Yeah. I mean, honestly. I mean, it's, that's not even a joke. No, it's not even a joke, right? Like, it, it really is. You look at the movies that are making it big this year and the, and the cinema that's made, the, the films, the series that are making it big. These are the ones that are making the, the waves right now. It's crazy. And so game theory is now moving on to, like, <laughs> game theory is now ARG theory. Film theory is now game theory. Food theory will become the ARG channel, and then style theory is like, "Hey, I'm waiting for my turn." Like it just—it's just gonna pass on between the channels at this point. Yeah. Like the the distinctions between them is so arbitrary. It's so funny. Oh, it's cool. It's cool. I'm I'm hyped. I'm hyped in a way that I didn't think I would be hyped. I I thought I would have fun with it, but I also thought I'd be like, okay, like you know, cringy kind of funny. This looks it looks legitimately good. Now, obviously, you know, aesthetically, it looks great. There's still stuff about the story that's very unclear. This is just showing you the individual elements, but from a standpoint of individual elements, it looks good. Um, from the story, I don't know. I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious what's going on. Um, yeah, I don't, I, I'm not sure. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> We're going to find out. What, I'm, I'm still, my mind keeps going back to what Mike is looking at up in the sky. Um, what would it be? Like bird, bird animatronic, Rawr! chica, chica in flight, Rawr! bird trap, <laughs> bird trap. <laughs> oh, that's awesome! Let me know what are your theories down in the comments below. What did I miss? Uh, I feel I feel like we pulled out as much as we could from this one, but I'm curious to get your thoughts. Are you excited? Are you not? Uh, I think it's hard not to be after seeing this. To be honest, like I think even for haters of this franchise, or like oh, it was overexposed, like. It's a pretty solid first impression. So uh, let me know. I am going to go hunker down in my bunker and just, you know, rock myself to sleep as I figure out how this is going to mess up all of my timelines. Uh, <laughs> I love it. I'm like, hey, here's the final timeline. All right, throw that all away. Here's the most important books. Here's the most important movie. Whatever. So ignore me. I'm <laughs> just going to go, uh, you know, soothe myself to sleep. So thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, remember, it wasn't a live stream, but it was a video. A video for you. I'll see ya! We're gonna have so much fun together. Right? That's what the line was? That was the line? We're gonna have so much fun together. Yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, we'll go with that. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure she said that. Yeah, that's definitely a quote that happened in this movie. Yeah. Done! <laughs>